The image of a young woman, her hair wrapped in a red kefia, clutching an AK-47, became a symbol of Palestinian resistance across the world. After Leila Khaled hijacked a TWA flight from Athens, bound for Athens from Rome on August 29, 1969. Just over a year and six plastic surgeries later, she was arrested during a second hijacking attempt during which one of her comrades was shot dead. Khaled's main aim was to bring to the world's attention the Palestinian people's struggle. She said, before the hijackings, no one heard our screaming from the tents. The popular front for the liberation of Palestine is still the biggest leftist organization in, Palest in Palestine, Palestinian political life. Leila Khaled remains one of the PFLP's most recognizable figures and a global icon of resistance. After serving as keynote speaker for the 5th International Assembly of ILPS in November of 2015, Leila Khaled accepted the invitation to become an honorary member of the League. I would like to call uh, Fatin Jarara of the uh, Palestinian Youth Movement to read Leila's message to this conference. It's an honor to be here amongst all of you, uh, and it's an extreme honor for me to read this statement on behalf of my sister and comrade, Leila Khaled, who I had the pleasure of meeting last year in the Philippines at the ILPS conference, and it was an amazing experience. And I want to read this as a Palestinian young woman living in the diaspora. On behalf of my party, the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and the liberation struggle of the Palestinian people, I greet and salute you today. The International League of People's Struggle plays a distinguished and critical role in building international resistance to imperialism, which ravages our homelands and requires the construction of a front of resistance among our struggles for justice and liberation. I had the great honor of addressing the Fifth International Assembly of ILPS and serving as an honorary member of ILPS. When in Manila, it was a powerful and remarkable experience to meet with the movements in the Philippines struggling on the front lines to combat imperialism, feudalism, and bureaucrat capitalism. From the women's movements to workers and peasants organizing, to the powerful meeting that I had with the LUMAD, the indigenous people struggling for the return of their, to their land from which they were uprooted. As our Palestinian people have been struggling to return to our occupied and colonized homeland for nearly 70 years as an indigenous people forced from our homes by Zionist settler colonial armies, we felt a commonality and mutual understanding of our struggles as indigenous peoples. Today, we know that you are meeting in the belly of the beast of U.S. imperialism as it bombs and threatens to bomb and rain death and destruction on people around the world. It is critical for the movements in the United States to build and develop your ongoing work and struggle to confront imperialism and the threat it poses to the world, to stop its ongoing threats and reality of raining bombs and drones warfare, drone warfare on the people of Syria and Yemen, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Its policy of destruction that continues to threaten to push back progressive and revolutionary movements in Latin America and its policy of strategic alliance and funding for settler colonialism abroad of $38 billion to the Zionist occupation state for the weaponry used to suppress, subjugate, and dispossess the Palestinian people. The building of an anti-war, anti-imperialist movement is absolutely critical to confront the U.S. war machine, particularly inside the United States with a strong internationalist focus. ILPS is playing an important role in making this a reality. Of course, we also see the realities of the United States beyond its power and threat as not only an imperial aggressor against our peoples and homelands, but also as a settler colonial enterprise built on the genocide of indigenous people and the enslavement and oppression of black people and other oppressed peoples. We extend our strongest support for the black liberation movement, for the indigenous movement struggling in Standing Rock and across the land, and for all the struggles 
and popular movements fighting hard inside the imperial, imperial monster itself. On this occasion, we also salute the people of the Philippines for your victory in pushing out U.S. joint military exercises. A powerful, a powerful victory in well over 120 years of struggle against U.S. imperialism. At the same time, we see the police trucks seeking to mow down the protesters of the National Democratic Movement taking the streets at the U.S. Embassy, and we express all of our solidarity to the people of the Philippines and your popular movements in the confrontation of U.S. imperialism and its allies at home, and in winning justice for your people. We also know on this occasion that this week, and on October 24th, mark the 33rd anniversary of the imprisonment of George Ibrahim Abdullah, the Lebanese communist revolutionary struggle for Palestine. He has been in prison since October 24, 1984. And as we speak, people are protesting around the world, including outside of his prison, for his, free, for his freedom. George Abdullah, like the Palestinians prosecuted in the United States, like the legendary Rasmiya Aude, for decades, a symbol of struggle for Palestinian women and the entire Palestinian people is part of struggle of over 7,000 Palestinians for liberation from Zionist and imperialist jails and persecution. Today, it is critical to build international support for George Abdullah, for Asmiya Aude, and for all of the Palestinian political prisoners, including the leader of our party, Ahmed Saadat, imprisoned in Zionist prisons. We know that our leaders are tortured, imprisoned, held behind bars in order to isolate their vision and hold the struggle of the Palestinian people for freedom, for the liberation of Palestine from the river to the sea, and for the return of Palestinian refugees in our millions, and for the dismantling of the entire Zionist project that has been constructed upon our dispossession. And this is why we emphasize that we must not rest until every Palestinian prisoner is free. This is the road to freedom for Palestine and part of the struggle for justice and liberation everywhere in the world. We also know that it is in nearly November and nearly the anniversary of the British colonial Balfour Declaration that promised the land of Palestine to the Zionist movement. This also marks 100 years of the Palestinian people's struggle for liberation and against colonialism. On this 100 year anniversary, we must mark it not only with memory, but with action and intensified struggle. Your protests, your demonstrations, and your demands for boycott and international isolation of the Israeli state and the Zionist project are part of the struggle of the Palestinian people to achieve the right of return and the liberation of all of Palestine. We salute the work being done in the United States by so many organizations, particularly among students and youth, and urge you to escalate, intensify, and build upon the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel and in support of the Palestinian people's resistance and national liberation struggle. All salutes to the International League of People's Struggle and your anti-imperialist resistance in the center of U.S. imperialism. Victory to Palestine, victory to all of the people's struggle for liberation.